folks, welcome to another edition in Real Estate Experts. As always, I'm your host, Glenn Twiddle, bringing you leading experts from around the country and around the world to help you, the home seller, traverse the minefield that is transacting a property. So I'm here today with leading author, agent, hired gun consultant. I mean, the list of what this guy does is a mile long. I'm talking about none other than author of the best-selling book, Don't Sit On It, Sell It, and that's Peter Forbes. Pete, thanks for hanging out, my man. Thanks for having me along, Glenn. <laughs> Mate, as I was just saying, I'm here to pick your brain about how to help our viewers transact a property because there's so much uncertainty about who to trust, who to believe or whatever. So I know people in, out in your area have a pretty easy choice, right? They can just choose you. But for someone who's watching in Cairns or in Brisbane or in Sydney or whatever, what are some of the things you recommend people to look for when, when choosing a really good real estate agent? Yeah, sure, Glenn. Well, I guess the biggest thing, and recently I went to a, a seminar and Richard Branson happened to be a speaker mm. there, and they asked him this very question, you know, how would you choose uh, the right real estate agent? And the first thing he said was, they'd have to be a nice person. Mm. Now that sounds a bit ridiculous, but at the end of the day, if, if a person speaks well to you, is listening, uh, makes great eye contact, yep. well that's the sort of thing that they're going to bring to the table you, when they're selling their house. You'd think that's just par for the course though, wouldn't you? I mean. <laughs> is that not? <laughs> You'd be amazed uh, the amount of people that I meet that actually hate their real estate agents. Wow. Um, the second thing I would look at is their ability to follow up, particularly mm. with buyers. I mean, this day and age, uh, I mean, real estate agents often aren't that well liked. Would mm. you agree? Yeah, yeah, um, no. And, and part, a big reason of that is the follow ups is lacking. Mm. Um, so I'd test your agent out, go to some open houses, see what sort of level of follow up they offer, mm. uh, particularly. You know, from a buyer point of view, are they ringing you back to see if you are interested in that house you've looked at? So where's that sweet spot? Like how much follow-up would be considered stalkerish too much and how much would be too little? Like where's the sweet spot that we should be looking for the, you know, the Peter Forbes of Sydney or the Peter Forbes of Melbourne? Yeah, there is a bit of a trap there. I mean, you, you don't want an agent that's just going to ring someone every two hours yeah. to see if, if they're willing to buy. <laughs> uh, that would be ridiculous. But I mean, at the end of the day, this day and age, there, there are ways and means to communicate with people without, you know, being in their bedroom. Mm. Um, you know, SMS is a good one after an open house. Thanks mm -hmm. for coming along today. Yep. Certainly a follow-up call is necessary. Mm -hmm. um, and, and emails. I mean, there's, there's some great ways to communicate with people these days without hassling yeah. them, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, okay, good. So again, and I'm glad you've given us some really tangible criteria that no follow-up's bad, and that still stuns me that agents are still leaving stones unturned, I suppose, you know, uh, but hourly phone calls are not so so yeah. good. So maybe an SMS after they leave and maybe a follow-up call within a day or so. Sure. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. Um, what else? You know, I know that, mate, you've got an arsenal a mile long of, of, what, of what you do. What are some of those things that we can be really on the lookout for to observe in an agent to know we're dealing with someone who can really walk the talk because all the agents can talk it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Look, I think their level of marketing then is something that needs to be looked at. Look mm. at, you know, how they appear on realestate.com. You know, does the property that they're, they're selling stand out? Mm. Um, you know, I often scroll through pictures on realestate.com myself and think, wow, would you really put that photo on there? Mm. Um, you know, you can, you can tell an agent by the quality of their marketing. And that results in a higher price for those sellers, doesn't it? Really, there's a financial ramification for doing something that's less than those criteria you're talking about, yeah? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. I mean, if, if someone doesn't see your property in the right light, I mean, they're not even gonna set foot in the front door, never alone buy it. So, Pete, before we get to some of those other skill sets we've got around marketing for yourself, I've had some questions from some viewers around the subject of, of the fee, like the commission, the cost of transacting a property. We've got some agents that look like they're almost doing it for free. They're almost giving it away at you know, almost no money. And then you've got some people that are charging what seems like a year's wages for the average Aussie uh, and everywhere in between. Now, I know you're not the most exp expensive guy in the game, nor are you the cheapest, but tell us about how the sellers out there can kind of traverse that who do we believe is the should we go with the cheapest should we go with the best i don't know mate what's your take on that the problem here is people look at real estate agents like they're a product or a commodity i mean if i was selling a bottle of milk say for two dollars and my competitor was right next door selling the same bottle same use by date for three dollars who are you going to go yeah, with? yeah mine yeah. at two dollars yep and 
That's how you buy a product when they're all the same. The problem is real estate agents aren't all the same. Mm. You know, some market better, some have negotiating skills that'll get you more for your money. Mm. Um, so you've got to look at all those things. And at the end of the day, if you were to sell your house for 420,000, for instance, through one agent, mm -hmm. and his fee was 15,000, and agent number two sold your house for 400,000, his fee was five, yeah, you, you, who's the cheapest yeah, in that that's example? Right. Yeah. Um, so you've got to be very careful with, with how you choose your agent. But right. at the end of the day, the cheapest agent is not necessarily the cheapest when it comes to how much money you've got left in your pocket. Understood. So how? what can a, a seller do? Because every agent out there, I've spoken to hundreds of them, they all say they're the agent that can get the highest price. Every single one of them. So what can a seller do to, in their own mind, prove to themselves that they're talking to someone who can do it as opposed to just say they can do it? Well, I'd test them out on, on, on their negotiating tactics. You know, firstly, they've got to be trying with their marketing to get more than one person interested in the property. I'd test them out on what they would do if two people were interested in buying their property at the same time. So when you say test them, do you mean like ask them about their role? Would, they, they, would you role play with them? What absolutely. Would you do? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If, if, if that's where a, a seller wants to go, absolutely. Mm. Um, and you, you know that'll show signs of where they're at with their negotiating skill level. Yeah, okay. The other thing you could look for, or sellers could look for, is some historical proof of what they've done. Some examples of sales that they've made, testimonials from their previous sellers mm. that, that show them in this light of the greatest negotiator there is. Yeah, I know, look, I've seen some of yours, I've met some of your sellers, mate, yeah. you know, so uh, I definitely know that you've got that a mile long, and I'm glad that that's one of the criteria that our viewers should be looking for, proof. Not just lip service, but proof that what they say is true. So, very cool, mate. So, the next question I've had from the viewers is, what you describe here in your book and in other things I've seen you write, you call it this common trap, this trap for young players that sellers often buy into that you've said costs them, you've seen it cost people tens of thousands of dollars in their end price. Mate, what's that common trap that these sellers are buying into? Yeah, look, I, I see this all the time in, in our area um, and, and basically, a seller will get, say, three or four agents around. You know, the first two or three agents will say around 300,000. The fourth agent will come in and say, look, you can get 400,000 for your property. Now, quite often, well, in my industry, this is called buying the listing. And what okay. the method is from this agent is they take on the listing at any price. Mm -hmm. And I guess, in a sense, they wear that seller down over time till it comes down to a saleable price. Mm. The problem with this scenario for a seller is the best period to be selling your house in is the first two to four weeks on the market. Mm. Now if you've wasted that at a property that's overpriced, chances are you haven't had anyone in that bracket who's even looked at the property. Mm. So no real buyers have looked at it. So you've wasted the best time possible to sell your house at a price that's too mm. high. So the agents are playing this little game to win the listing, but the very thing that won them the listing ends up damaging the seller's price. So it's the wrong criteria to be choosing on from the sounds of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I've seen this many times where you know, a property will sit there then for two and three years and actually- Two and three years. Two or three years, <laughs> oh, Clint. And it will actually sell for less money than what I was initially saying. Yeah. So you've, you've got to look at that and, and, and test that seller out, test that agent out, I should say. Mm. Uh, test that agent out, see, see you know, if they're prepared to put their money where their mouth is. Mm. Are they prepared to buy the house off you <laughs> yeah. at that price? Yep. I would test them out. And if they cringe, well, you know that, mm. you, you know, it's a bit of a false mm. number that they're giving you. Yeah, we want to be looking for the evidence that, that what yeah. they're saying is even in the ballpark. Because yeah. any agent, it seems like they can pluck any figure they want out of the, out of the sky. They can and they can't because, I mean, this day and age, anyone can get you know, data of what's sold in the area. Mm. And, and certainly a real estate agent that doesn't know values in their area, well, that's a concern. From the sounds of it, it's either deceptive that they know they're doing it, or it's incompetence that they don't know pricing, as you just say. Not so good trait. Either way, <laughs> it's unacceptable. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks for clearing that one up, mate. There's your money's worth watching this interview right there. <laughs> so, Pete, my next question is, really, it's one that, again, my viewers have put to me, is do we really need an agent at all? Like, in this day and age, as you mentioned, if data's becoming easier to come by and some of these things are, are becoming a little, you know, now we can't quite throw our houses up on eBay yet, but, you know, do we need an agent at all? Well, the short answer is no. You really don't uh, these days. Now, 
Um, let's look at taxis, for instance. You don't need a taxi anymore. You mm -hmm. just get Uber. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. So, I mean, that's the way the world's going. What you need to look at, and if you're thinking about selling your house yourself, by all means, have a look at it. Have a think about it. You need to have the time on your hands uh, to prepare yourself for that. Buyers these days aren't going to accept that you're busy at work and can't show them through the house. Mm. They're not going to be able to accept that you can't get back to them. Okay, um, so you might need to take off a couple of weeks of annual leave or maybe a month? Probably a month, yeah. I, I would think. And that's if you've got it marketed well and, and, mm. and priced well. Uh, the next thing you've got to look at is negotiating skills. Now, I think this is where you know an everyday person won't understand the knack of negotiation when mm. it comes to real estate. So you've got to look at that. Maybe do a little course on negotiation, mm -hmm. uh, because just saying you're negotiable is probably the worst thing you can possibly <laughs> say to a buyer. Yeah. Because you know buyers could think anything of that word. Mm. Some think it's a hundred thousand. Mm. Yep. Um, and certainly most sellers will think it's two or three thousand. Yeah. So just yeah, have a look at the time factor and have a look at the skill factor of you know, what agents can offer you, I guess, before mm. you make that decision. It's going down that path of what you said before. If an agent can demonstrate that they're going to cover their own fee through their skill in marketing and their skill in negotiation, because like your guys, I've heard your people say, you work for free, you know, because you cover your own costs in the extra money you get them. Another thing, you, you know, a seller's going to have to be ready for if they go down this path is are they prepared are they prepared for this type of sale? I know one of my guys, Daryl, that works for me, he had a seller once that you know, tried to sell it himself first. And after a couple of weeks, he had people through his house. Mm. But he rang up and he said, Daryl, I can't do this. I've got buyers and I don't know what to do with them. Mm. So he was in a position where he wasn't comfortable with the whole scenario. So mm. there was pain involved. Almost price. like I suppose some of us I've had it where, you know, you start off selling a car that you've had. Yeah. And you start off all, you know, I remember once when we did, it's almost like, who will I allow? to buy my car from me. <laughs> but by the end of it, I'm ready to drive the thing into the river here, you know, because you just get so sick of the tyke and all the, like it's, I'm not set out to sell a car and a lot of homeowners I know aren't set out to do it themselves. The other trap is from a buyer point of view, buyers generally aren't comfortable talking to sellers about mm. the house. They're certainly gonna, not gonna bring up the negative things of a house. Mm. Uh, and when it comes to price, they're not gonna be comfortable talking price with the actual owner of the mm. house nine times out of ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So you've got to be aware of that. How does it affect the, the buyer market, I guess, mm. for your property? So the next question I've got, it's getting back to kind of what you mentioned earlier before. One of the criteria we should be looking for is skill of marketing. And we've got, again, some agents out there charging literally $20,000 for full page ads in newspapers and glossy magazines. I saw one agent advertising a normal property in the Qantas in-flight magazine. Right, and, and every other media you can, what do we do, Pete? Do we spend nothing on marketing? Do we spend $20,000 on marketing? Mate, it's a minefield again. What's your take and your unique? I've seen the results you get. You're the expert in this area. What's your take on marketing? Look, marketing is important selling anything, um, but it, it's, it's really important in selling a house. I think you can go overboard. There's got to be some kind of happy medium there where you're, where you're, you're finding some buyers uh, for your house and you're getting the, the top price. I mean, you can go over the top. I remember I had a seller once for a property, he wanted to advertise in the New York Times for his property. Goodness. Well, to me, that was probably a bit ridiculous and the cost of that just, I mean, it's unlikely that you're gonna find someone yep. uh, in, in the New York, from the New York Times. So, you know, there's extremes of it. And I think you've got to find a happy medium that you're comfortable with. Most people these days, they're looking online. Mm. I mean, walk past, any coffee shop, people are there flicking through online. Mm. Uh, my father was a real estate agent years ago. He advertised in the paper and he had his shop window. Dragged people into his car and he kept them there until they bought something. Yeah. Those days are gone. Yep. It sounds like fun, yeah. but those days are gone. Um, you've really, as a real estate agent now, selling properties, you've got to focus with that with that online side of things. Well, absolutely, and that's what I want to sort of get, get into is the fact that you've been cutting edge with your online marketing while a lot of people uh, in other real estate agencies in your area and across the country are clinging to this newspaper that is getting less and less readership. So tell us about the different ways to market online and what you're, what you're kind of doing to, to really get these results that I've seen from your sellers that no one else is coming close to. Social media these days is a big one. Mm. I mean, you, you can advertise on there for a minuscule of the price of, well, in my area, it's $1,500 for, for a page in the paper. So, you know, what you can spend for a, you know, a, a small percentage of that 
you mm. can reach so many more people uh, in your designated area yeah. uh, with your marketing. Yeah. So you've got to look at all the options there and you know, if, if newspaper advertising helps your real estate agents spruik their business, mm. is that something on your you really, dime? Is yeah. that something you really want to be involved in? Mm. As yeah, a seller? yeah, absolutely. I love how you, for a, for a fraction of the cost of those old school programs, you're still getting those multiple buyers that you mentioned before to drive that seller's price up, as opposed to like you say, the other guys are driving those sellers' prices down. Yeah, uh, doing it the old way. And one of the things I notice you're leading the way with. I don't know if it's your secret weapon because you seem to be one of the only guys doing it and doing it well, is using video to sell property. Tell us about that relatively new innovation that again, you're one of the first blokes to even embrace that. You can do professional photos with a property mm -hmm. and that's great, people see it online and video creates a different aspect altogether because that, that buyer feels like they're in the house. Uh, now as a real estate agent, when people are having their second look at a property, that's when you know that they're showing some interest in it. Mm -hmm. Quite often, a buyer has looked at the property online many times before they've even phoned the agent. Mm. So sometimes their second inspection is actually the first time they've yeah. actually So the first time they're in it physically, yeah. they've got the emotion that you're saying, yeah. like normally a second inspection yeah. used to have in the yeah. oldie worldie. Yeah, and video <laughs> creates that mm. atmosphere around it. I mean, I'm not talking about a slideshow that just flicks pictures through and some dud music on there. <laughs> I'm talking about an interactive video with you know, the agent speaking and talking about the benefits of the property mm. and, and really showcasing it in the fashion that it deserves to be sold. Yeah, and I've noticed that, as you mentioned that, with you on on the screen, welcoming and kind of being the host of that video, have you found that when those buyers come and meet you that you're already got a bit more rapport? It's that thing you mentioned why maybe when sellers are selling it themselves or not, that you've got an, where those buyers like you, so they're more willing to talk about you, uh, with you about price and things because they feel like they know you a little bit. Would that be what you've found? Absolutely, mm. absolutely. And, and I mean, the way internet works this time, I mean, video spread. People, mm. people that wouldn't necessarily be looking at houses are, are looking at your video of your house mm. uh, being sold. So it spreads around and you know, people talk. And mm. that, that's, that's how you sell any product, yeah. not just houses. Tell us about, and I know this is a one thing of, of many strategies that you do, but I love that you're really the only person doing it that I've seen in your area. And across the country, not many are doing it. And that's using Facebook and targeting those ads. Tell us a little bit about, I suppose, something as unique as Facebook for selling properties. The beauty of Facebook and advertising with Facebook is you can actually pinpoint who you're targeting. Yep. So, you know, if you can spend $100 on Facebook and it's the equivalent of spending yeah. Two and a half grand in the newspaper. It's a no-brainer. I love it. We're in this. I think we're in this very unique space where uh, where, where these underpriced media like Facebook are. Um, they're not going to be this cheap for long. But while they are, let's take it. Yeah, that's yeah? it. Very cool. Yeah. So, mate, thanks so much for kind of helping out our viewers with some of the, uh, you know, some of the common traps for young players. But, bud, there's more that you talk about in your book here. Don't sit on it, sell it. Mate, tell us about what happened that you wanted to put your experience in a in a book. How come you've written a book on the subject? In my uh, career in real estate, I've seen so many things, you know, things that buyers and sellers do mm. um, and say. And, you know, I guess things happen and you, and you see a lot of things. And I wanted to put on paper my experience of that and where, where people, I guess, have gone wrong and where they've gone right too. Yep. And I've put that on, on paper for people to have a read. It's it's a pretty simple book and a lot mm. of it's common sense. Yeah, uh, but, but common uh, sense isn't always common practice, mate, I can promise you. <laughs> no, it's not. But, yeah, you know, I put it on paper and, you know, it's just a, an easy little read there that mm. you know, people can take something away. Yeah, I, I love your humility, my man, because I know there's tens of thousands of dollars worth of value here for only twenty nine ninety five. but, mate, can I be cheeky? Can I hit up the? Can I hit you up for a copy for our viewers? Absolutely. All oh, right, mate. So we'll get the URL put up there to get a free copy of "Don't Sit on It, Sell It." Pete Forbes, thank you so much for hanging with me today, my man. Uh, it's been my pleasure, and I know you've been of great help to our crew. Great. Thanks, Thanks mate. Folks, that's another edition of Real Estate Experts in the Can. Peter Forbes here has blown us away once again. I'm really thankful to him for spending some time with us. And until next time, we'll see you then. Bye for now.